Thanks for everyone for, for coming here. Obviously, we're starting this new series where each week or two we'll be getting grantees on to discuss their grant, whether that's tooling, producing a research paper, or and so on and so forth. So we're really excited that we've got our fourth V1.5 guest, Sarang, from the Investo team, who I know had recently had a grant for, for the DYDX trading simulator. And obviously, we've got our regular Carl from DYDX Grants, who will talk about anything recent that's updated for V1.5. And just to give everyone a really quick TLDR of the agenda, Carl will talk through any recent progress with V1.5 and then we'll pass it over with questions to Sarang to discuss their grant, what's happening in the investor space, and also give a picture of, of what he's been working on both, I guess, personally and professionally. Um, so we usually pre-populate some questions that we'll ask and then after this, if anyone's got any questions for me, Carl, or Sarang, then by all means, raise your hand in the audience and we can bring you on the stage. Um, cool. So, Carl, as usual, we'll start off with you if that's okay. I mean, is there anything additional to touch on for V1.5? Hey, yeah, of course. Thank you, as always, for having us. Um, yeah, a couple of updates on my end. You know, things are, are business as usual um, in terms of grant applications. We're still seeing a steady flow of applications come in on a daily basis with some pretty good quality. Uh, so it's great to see, and it's really nice to see participation remain steady throughout these troubled times. But uh, hopefully everybody's staying safe out there, and hopefully everybody's looking forward to building, and we'll be here if, if you are having some exciting ideas on uh, projects or anything to that benefit the protocol. Uh, so last Friday, we released a monthly update for October, but given that it was the first monthly update since V1.5, it actually encompassed the last few months since August, basically. And as mentioned, going forward, we'll be doing this on a monthly basis at the end of the epoch. Probably trying to release them ahead of like the, the usual epoch call so that it gives people a chance to ask any questions on the grant's progress uh, on, on that usual epoch AMA that we have. And if you haven't had a chance to read that, I would recommend you to. Uh, it kind of goes over everything that we've done so far in grants. It gives an overview of, of our budget spending in V1.5, the remaining allocations, and it does go into detail as to like the remaining um, spending that we'll be doing, which, as I had kind of previously mentioned, is heavily focused on international growth and kind of these other grants. And so if you have ideas as to projects that fit within these two categories, then please DM me, submit an application, send us a chat in the grants channel, whatever it may be, but we're always open and uh, happy to hear more ideas. Um, we also released a dashboard last week. All of this is hosted on DYDXGrants.com. By the way, you can find all this information there. Uh, there's now a dashboard tab, which kind of is the initial release. As I had mentioned in, in the channel, it looks a little rough right now because we're dealing with issues with the MetaBase uh, embedding, but it should be improved in due time. And that is kind of there to improve transparency around application data and our process for reviewing, the turnaround, how much we're seeing per month, et cetera. And so uh, if you look at it, you can see we've gotten roughly 14 applications so far this month. So on track to kind of stick with, um, with the, the average of roughly 30 to 40 applications a month. And then um, we're going to work on adding some more stuff around there, like adding a live table of our budget. Uh, that's been spent and what's remaining to be spent and kind of the value with the market and everything like that. I'm working on that now. And we're also going to add a more live look at the grants that are getting completed so that people can go in there and track like completion rates and, and everything like that and kind of have better data sources. And um, yeah, otherwise, you know, as always, Give us a shout if you have cool ideas, if you are looking for something, if you're looking for any information on existing grants, or if you're looking to get funded for a new project, or if you just want to talk about what could potentially be a project. You know, I do that a lot with uh, potential grantees. And so just, uh, yeah, give me a shout in, in the grants channel and uh, we'll be sure to get back to you quickly. Nice. Thanks, Carl. I mean, that dashboard looks great. Just out of interest, you know, obviously we've had, or you've had 
14 applications so far. I mean, based on your experience prior as well, do grant applications sort of increase sort of during volatility times? Does it just remain stagnant? Do people become less interested? What's typically, what's the typical kind of process there? Yeah, I mean, you can see using that data as well, like it typically tracks actually quite well with our own kind of marketing efforts, uh, obviously. So like if you look at August was one of the highest months and that's because that's when we relaunched V1.5. So there was a lot of noise around like the grants program in the run up to V1.5. And so we saw a lot of applications. And then I think in March is kind of like, when we started really picking up stream as well with, with regards to the initial V1 grants program. And that's kind of why you saw a bit more applications. And that was also like peak bull. It's been a long year. So maybe, maybe I'm wrong on, on the when, when yeah. we were still in the bowl versus when we're in the spare, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so you, you do see this sort of drop off as the market starts to die off and general sentiment in this space starts to become a bit yeah yeah gloomier but uh overall yeah you know it it definitely does track the market a little bit and and when when things go into bear as with like everything trade volume participation and governance participation in grants programs kind of everything starts to die off right and that's just because a lot of people who might stick around just more because it's in a bull market will go back to doing what they were doing outside of this and, and maybe aren't really just as active but so that's why we have noticed though that if we make more of an effort to do blog posts kind of go on twitter a bit more and and do stuff like that that does drive our application growth and so that's an effort that we're going to drive forward with this month we're also working on like more regular blog updates on completed grants where we dive deep into the tool that's been built and then doing more kind of, yeah, uh, hosting events and, and stuff like that so that we, we can drive more engagement. For real, that's exciting. Thanks, Carl. Cool. Sarang, over to you. So, I mean, we'd love to, to hear more about you and, and the team's background. Um, so, yeah, maybe if you want to start talking about that. Sure. Um, first of all, hello, everyone. My name is Sarang. I'm from Investo. Uh, been around in the quantitative trading space for the last many years, um, about six years now, right? And uh, been a, in the software engineering data science space for quite some bit of time, about like 11, 12 years now. And I do come in with an interesting mix of experience, one on the programming side, software engineering, data analysis, and then so on. And on the other side, on quantitative trading, right? So essentially everything are dealing with like data, right? Like manipulation of data, right? Like building execution models, building trading logic, right? We've used a bunch of like trading tools uh, that have all been pretty popular for retail, right? Like things like TradingView, uh, Quantopian, Quant Connect, and uh, Thinkorswim, all of these platforms written a bunch of scripts, right? Like built on my own uh, indicators and uh, built my own trading strategies, right? But one thing that um, I think we've all kind of seen over the last many years is that when you want to create trading strategies, right? It's, it's easy to get in, right? But if you want to start scaling this to like, like a larger amount of capital, if you want to maintain a portfolio of strategies, right? And if you want to like build one strategy and kind of like executed in like across different assets things becoming uh, things become quite complicated and this is also the reason behind creating investo right um, at investo uh, what we want to be built um, uh, building is uh, a unified layer for traders to come in and essentially deploy their capital across of any strategy or asset class of their choice right so we are an ecosystem of trading apps right like starting from uh, data feeds right like like pricing feeds to research right like creation of trading strategies uh, we have like we are building like layers for doing that to execution engines right like anything ranging from just um, like writing your trading logic to like writing derivatives and so on, right? So we essentially do this across the spectrum, right? So we are one layer for traders to come and build their trading strategies and deploy them online. So that's Investo. Uh, We are a team of about eight uh, people right now. Um, It's a mix of software engineers and quantitative traders. But if you look at uh, the, the mix, 
usually it will be people who are like extremely fascinated in their own uh, space right like trying to solve the best problems in their own space whether it is on like software do- development side or on the quantitative finance side so at the end of the day right like we are a bunch of people who are like extremely motivated uh, to keep uh, developing in our own space that's super interesting how long's investo been been around for i can see on your website obviously you've got a Discord community as well, like no code tools for, for retail traders. Really interested to hear sort of what the typical kind of user base is for you guys as well. Yeah, so uh, we, I, I think that's an idea we started back in 2020, early 2020, right? Like that is where we start, just started making the, the first hires and so on, right? So um, the, the logic behind that was uh, you had a bunch of like like firms like like Quantopian that used to be extremely popular. If you are like quantitative trader, you probably come across this platform, right? Like where you can like code your strategy and like deploy it on a trade by exchange, right? So that used to be extremely popular back in the day. But eventually after Quantopian shut down, right, like there were like no real alternatives, right? And that's where we kind of like started picking the momentum, right? Because if at the end of the day, if you are a quant, right, and if you want to like kind of deploy like strategies, uh, you are forced to either build your own infrastructure ground up, right? And that is usually extremely, uh, not just expensive, but it's also time consuming, right? And you, you're supposed to be knowing a bunch of different things, right? For, for example, you just not only need to like know how to build like strategies right so you need to be extremely familiar with risk management and like trading and all of these concepts but you also we need to be good at like software engineering right like you need to know how to manage databases how to store time series data how to manipulate them in the most efficient manner right and also build all of the execution related logic so we've been around for a couple of years i think we kind of like started very small just trying to build a back testing engine and so on right but eventually we realized that okay this can be grown into something much bigger right because as other firms were like not focusing on this side i think this is where we really had the edge because we had an understanding of not just the software engineering piece of it but also on the the trading logic side and so yeah that's really interesting um before we get into kind of the the dydx trading sim I, i think just lastly to touch on kind of the products that you currently you guys currently offer obviously you've got is it shark sigma Zero X Trading Sim, and then soon to be Ticker Stop. I mean, I don't know if you want to just briefly touch on some of the use cases um, for those. Sure. Yeah. So um, at Investo, essentially, we want to be uh, handling three different tiers, uh, like of products. Like one being a research product, right? Like research would mean like building trading strategies, right? Like, um, and that's where Shark Sigma comes in, right? Essentially, this is a place where you can like kind of build your trading strategies, backtest them, right? And choose an exchange and deploy them. Uh, the other piece of tooling and infrastructure is actually on the the execution and the data infrastructure parts, right? And this would mean things like, say, pricing feeds, right? Like uh, connection with brokerages, right? Execution logic, right? And if you, and we have a, a module for, say, creating options uh, strategies, right? So if you want to like go and go ahead and create short title in like just one click, right? You'll be able to do that, right? So that's the second piece of like uh, infra related products. And then the final piece of products would include along the fund management piece, right? So I think if you are a portfolio manager, right, like who already has a strategy and he um, or she wants to deploy their cap, and he, uh, they want to get in more subscribers to their own product, right, and essentially scale capital, right, they'll be able to do that with uh, these sort of uh, products, right? So um, along the research side, this is where things like ticker stop uh, comes in, right, which is essentially... Uh, you just write a ticker and it shows you a bunch of statistics along the ticker that, for example, what the six month volatility was, right? Like what, how things have been in the last 30 days, right? So it will help you kind of determine your support resistance levels and things like that. Have a better understanding, right? And uh, we also use machine learning in a bunch of places, right? Like for example, along um, uh, along, uh, tick, uh, on, along ticker stop, it is more, mostly just descriptive statistics, right? Like trying to understand how the ticker itself is performing. But in other cases, for example, uh, we plan to use AI, right? Like in optimizing trade executions and, and so on, right? So that you can find the best fill when you're trying to deploy your trading strategy online, right? So along these three uh, tiers, right, is where we create our product modules. 
Awesome. No, that sounds great. And that, that's that's in addition to kind of your normal crypto DeFi space as well. That's in Forex indexes, ETFs, that type of thing, or is it mainly in the, the kind of crypto space? So um, from uh, from um, a product perspective, right, this is uh, more of an interface for traders to come in and like use it across a bunch of asset classes, right? So think about this, if you want to build a trend following strategy, right, and I'll just simplify this example, let's say a moving average crossover strategy, right? Like uh, you basically enter when you have 50 simple moving average crosses over 200 and you exit in the opposite criteria. Technically, you can do this in any asset class of your choice, right? You can do this on your stocks, right? You can do this on your crypto, right? And if you want to make the strategy more complex, you can you can do that as well, right? So we build a unified layer that can be used across any uh, any asset class, right? So we are asset class agnostic when it comes to building products, right? Where things get really interesting is on the integration pieces of it, right? So for example, that is where... Uh, we want to be integrating with like uh, exchanges, right? And that's where DeFi comes into play as well, right? So the underlying concepts of say portfolio optimization, automated trading strategies, that piece is common across, right? But the integration piece is where things get um, interesting on the crypto or DeFi space, right? If you think about it, right? Like if you're a quantitative trader, right? Most likely you've already been in the trade five world, right? And you're coming into the DeFi world and trying to execute a bunch of things or create new models and like trading strategies here, right? So in, in a sense that you are the same user trying to use both, right? So, and that's how we approach products as well, right? We create general purpose products, but there is a level of customization both in the crypto and the DeFi space. Awesome. That sounds great. Thanks, Orang. Okay, um, I guess we could try and touch on the, the DYDX trading sim then. I guess, do you want to touch on this, that specific product and, and how you came about wanting to, to build that? So, uh, yeah, so imagine you are a new trader, right? So uh, you kind of are familiar with DYDX, right? You know that it's an exchange, right? You can, uh, you can go to the platform and you can like add, uh, try to create candlesticks, right? Like try to add indicators, right? But uh, for a very no, no, some, uh, novice user, right? Like you need a kind of interface, right? Like where you can like build this trading strategy in a very simple and uh, simple manner, right? That's where a trading simulator comes into play, right? First of all, there are two pieces of this trading simulator. The first piece is that you can just simulate prices based on your expected market conditions, right? For example, now we know that of course things are extremely volatile, right? So you can uh, go ahead in this trading simulator, right? Like choose your volatility as high, right? Like try and try to see how things are going to be over the next one year, right? So the first part of this trading simulator is essentially uh, a modeling, uh, a model, right? Like that will kind of like simulate your prices one year out based on the volatility that you select, right? And the second piece of this trading simulator is that um, you can go ahead and create a trading strategy online, right? And for this, right, when I mean trading strategy, we are talking about one specific type of like class of like trading strategy, which is using technical indicators, right? Which is also used in DYDX, right? Uh, if you go to the DYDX interface, right, uh, um, you can go ahead and select indicators, right? And that is what we are trying to do in trading sim as well. You have a an option to kind of a drop down wherein you can go ahead like just select indicators and kind of like build your uh, trading strategy um, using the simulator right and when i talk about a trading strategy uh, it, it also helps you educate about what a trading strategy is right because if you look at what a trading strategy is usually it will have parameters right you need entry criteria right because uh, you uh, obviously it starts with a thesis right like you expect, say things to go in a certain way right and therefore you want to enter the market and on certain points right you also want to exit the market at certain points right and the third piece of this is like you want to do your position sizing in a sense that how you want to control uh, how, how much of your dollar you want to be allocating for that particular trade, right? So there is a risk management piece to this, right? And uh, the trading sim kind of simplifies all of these, right? In a kind of playful manner where you don't really need to go ahead and like deploy your real capital, mm -hmm. but uh, you can just have like simulations, right? So first of all, you can simulate the price. 
then you can select uh, the amount of uh, you can select your initial capital right so for example if you have $10000 or if you want to simulate this in $10000 you can have a risk management piece of it which is like kind of allocating okay uh, i want to allocate 10% of my portfolio for this particular trade right and you can go ahead and build your trading uh, strategy and see kind of how that trading strategy performs right and towards the end of this right the, the trading simulator gives you the trade statistics right in the sense like how many entries have been there how many exits have been there uh, what does your kind of return right so it goes ahead and like kind of shows you these returns and then without deploying your real capital you kind of like not only have a sense of like how to build a trading strategy but you can also see how it would have performed right and that will help you make the better decisions for example you might want to change your position sizing accordingly right so this is uh, talking about trading simulator in, in in general right first of all it helps you simulate a bunch of trade right? right helps you play around a few things before going ahead and like deploying things in a real market and therefore it's extremely useful for someone uh, who has just entered the market who wants to build a trading strategy but doesn't really know how to do it or if you have a trading strategy just try it out before you actually go ahead and like deploy your real capital uh, and therefore it it gives you not only more confidence but also it helps you build this intuition as to how to um, build strategies that sounds awesome and and really helpful for people to use i guess for people in the audience and, and for those watching on youtube as well curious is this i know you you've touched on it and so it should be self explanatory in a sense but is this like product um like migrated migratable per se into the uh like cosmos network there's not like a blockchain specific or is it is it blockchain agnostic i take it it's just allows you to just play around with it regardless of of where i guess dydx is at at that point correct right so this is not this particular product and right, trading sim it's not going to be impacted by the cosmos integration it is more so just as an interface for dydx right it's not impacted by how um, how the deployments are done or anything of that sort right so it also helps both uh, i would say primarily uh, novice traders and like like beginners Uh, because it helps uh, you like a understand how the concepts like like volatility position sizing and so on as well as uh, it helps you educate about uh, trading strategy entries exits and all of these concepts as well right so it is primarily targeted towards the the entry level traders right but also for someone who is in the intermediate right like who kind of like already has a strategy right like but who just wants to test the strategy it would be catering to that as well right so yeah and answering two questions here the first part it's not really being impacted by the the cosmos migration second part being okay it's also uh, helping out mostly novice traders but also uh, some some bit of intermediate traders as well fantastic thanks for that cool and i guess where can people see this demo find out information about how it's used obviously there was a youtube video that was upla- uploaded as well as links on on the grant page i think where's the best place yeah. to to see this in action yeah so on the grants page you will have all of the product documentation right you will also find github links and youtube links over there right in our github page we have the entire source code for the trading simulator as well as uh, you have like links for the product usage as well so we have created detailed documentation um, at, at least for the initial version right so that users can go in and like like kind of test out this product and uh, if they want to uh, just go and see a youtube video instead we also have a 10 minute youtube video kind of like describing all of the concepts uh, from beginning to end right so you can go ahead and like check that out as well right and for anyone who's like seriously interested in like kind of like building this to the next level we have open source the code as well right so if you are a developer feel free to tinker around the code as well as make any suggestions in terms of the development itself awesome thanks for that yeah i mean i've watched the youtube video it's really helpful so if anyone really wants to have a play around with it um be sure to check that out I guess as well, kind of moving on to more so like the DYDX ecosystem. How long have you been around the DYDX ecosystem for? I think I've seen you in the Discord for a while. Um, yeah, how? Uh, what got you interested in that? Yeah, so I've been familiar uh, with DYDX at least since uh, mid 2021, right? I've been an active member of the community um, throughout this entire year, right? So 
one of the main things that actually got me interested in DYDX in the first place was actually regarding trading fees itself, right? If anyone is a trader and is like user centralized exchange, you kind of know how expensive it is, right? Like it, it works okay if you are like just an investor, right? But if you want to do a bunch of trades, right? Like that's where things get really expensive because all of the fees, right? And that's where uh, DYDX comes into play. So the first aspect that actually got me hooked in was the fees but once i started using the product itself right i think the product is just amazing right like for anyone who has like been around like like trading for quite some time or who has like used other products like say trading view they, they kind of understand how the the interface is like extremely simple for anyone to come and use right so that is what kind of like has helped me uh, hooked on to this ecosystem and of course the last thing is the community itself right if you just hang around in the discord community you would actually learn a bunch of different things right like of course for a trader it's uh, you understand all of the nuances, but also there are like just so many activities going on across, right? So all of this has been extremely helpful for me uh, over the longer run. It, it is actually, I've learned so much itself, right? Like also uh, nuances, some some concepts which I've like never thought of um, before, right? So I think all of these kind of like help me. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think it's great to have, you know, really strong players like you around in the ecosystem and, love to to continue to see you hang around and continue to to work and provide value and and i know a lot of the community of dydx holders specifically as well really do value high quality grantees so it's it's great to see such such great work produced and to have such high quality parties interested i guess finally just just from me before i hand it over to, to carl and the audiences how, how can people find more about you, Investo? Are you active in social media? Obviously, you have a Discord channel. Should people follow you there? Where should people find yeah. you? Yeah, so the first thing first, right, we have a website, investo.com. It's I-N-P-S-T-O.com, right? So that's the place where you can pretty much get all of the information, everything from our Discord link and uh, and so on. We also have a Discord community, right? Like uh, it has quite a few members that's uh, kind of like open for people to just come in and kind of like uh, give any of the inputs or like suggestions or like use the product and like product feedback and all of this stuff or like talk to other members. Uh, we are also active on Twitter. Uh, on Twitter, it is again at Investo, right? At I N V S T O. Or uh, I also am quite active on Twitter, right? Like my ID is Tarang A B, right? S A R A N G A B, right? So you can follow us on any of these links, um, and I'll I'll be I'm on the on the Discord here as well, right? So feel free to ask me any any questions uh, either here or on Twitter or or anywhere else that you are able to find us. Brilliant. Thanks, Saran. That was great. Carl, I don't know if you've got anything to add or any questions you want to ask before I open it up to the audience. Yeah, thanks a lot, Saran. That was awesome. And thanks for all those questions. I think we covered almost everything, I feel like. Um, I'm curious if, if it is possible, let's say, so like we kind of touched on what it would be like for a novice trader who kind of wants to use this out the box and then they can refer to the YouTube video and that sort of thing. What about a more pro trader? Are they able to leverage the GitHub in order to build additional strategies on top of this beyond what was already done kind of out yeah. the box? So uh, there are two parts of this question, right? First is for someone who wants to build a more complicated tra trading strategy, right? Like, of course, they can use the same um, model, right? Like, try to add in more modules. For example, okay, we have, like, listed down three indicators, really right? moving average, uh, RSI, and Bollinger Japan's, right? But if a trader wants to use any other thing, he can use this as a framework to kind of, like, like build the model as well. Uh, or like uh, any of the trading strategy. The second part is that there are other grant uh, projects that have like been done. For example, you have a trading view uh, integration and you have a D by D by DX execution as part of like the other grant uh, grantee projects, right? And that's where things get really interesting because what we can do is like for a 
an intermediate trader he can like kind of test out uh, trading strategies using trading sim he can use the uh, he can use the same st- uh, trading strategy right and kind of build it out on trading view and finally he can go ahead and, and like have this integration and kind of like deploy that on dy dx exchange with uh, one of the other grand projects right so yeah so for someone who is uh, uh, who who has exposure right like there are so many other projects which other grantees have been building and uh, all of this would be extremely helpful uh, a combination of these right um, yeah awesome yeah makes sense um yeah happy to open up for other questions and I'll kind of think more as well awesome if anyone wants to to ask a question sarang me or or carl or means raise your hand and we can we can bring you on the stage we'll give it a a minute just in case anyone um wants to ask no it's a quiet audience i think market vibes <laughs> yeah exactly i feel like i saw a hand go up when i was talking earlier on but yeah. maybe that person left i'm not sure yeah i think so so rang i guess anything lastly from you that you want to you want to touch on or if we covered mainly everything yeah i think first of all i do want to thank dydx and the grants program right i think the grants program is extremely beneficial for anyone who's just coming into the ecosystem um to actually build and contribute to the ecosystem i think it's extremely meaningful right so first of all i want to thank the the grants community and secondly to everyone in the community itself right and uh, good so uh, i think we are going through like a little bit of harsh time especially in the last couple of days right but i, I mean uh, for anyone who's building right i encourage you to just take a step back right and kind of like look at how the ecosystem has played out over the longer run and what you would realize is that as long as you keep building right as long as you're still here and as long as you're motivated over the long run i think it's it's all going to work out fine right Yeah, that's really great advice. Great words. Great words. <laughs> Sorry James, yeah. Yeah. No worries. Um it's perfect. Well, I think we can end on that positive note then. Um Sarang, thanks very much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Carl, likewise every time. And thanks everyone in the audience for tuning in. I guess what we'll do is I will download this audio file, post it on YouTube within the next few hours, and then for anyone who's not here, um who's listening to this, I'll post it anyway. on the foundation's discord and on on the youtube page so i'll share that with you sarang as well later on today just so you can keep that as well thank you so much guys james call and everyone thanks lot, sarang and thanks thank everybody you. for joining as well and thank you james for hosting as always really pleasure. appreciate it pleasure see you guys next time take care